Today I'm going to talk about schizophrenia. If you bought and read my book, Life with My Schizophrenic Father, then you know secondhand how it is. Or if you have schizophrenia yourself, then you'll know firsthand how it is. But I want to talk about a little bit how it was for me growing up with a dad who had one of the worst mental illnesses out there. Schizophrenia is, it's got to be the top, well, it's definitely the top three or maybe <laughs> the top two of mental illnesses. Yeah, people with schizophrenia are often homeless, jobless. Um, they are definitely on very, very heavy medication because without medication, <laughs> They cannot function. My father could not function without taking this medication. But the medication was horrible. My my dad said it, it made him feel like um, like a heavy, heavy um, blanket was over him. That um, like he was drugged, like taking um, like being in a stupor, going through life not fully alive. You know, um, everything, all the feelings are repressed, he said. He couldn't feel, um, he just couldn't feel things fully. And that's very difficult um, when you can't feel things fully. Um, being so subdued. <laughs> very different from me as a borderline who's like, ah! Yeah, who feels things intense and deeply. When he was on his medication, he was the exact opposite. It was like, you know, someone was stuffing him in a, a baby, like stuffed in a pillowcase and, you know, smothered to death. But that's what the medication needed to do. It needed to dull, you know, void those voices in his ear. Think of it like this. Um not being able to turn down the noise in your mind. It's as if you have raging loud earphones on your head, screaming things at you morning, noon, and night, and you can't lower the volume. You can't shut it off. It's just there, stuck to you, and you can't you know, that would drive anyone insane. Can you imagine, like, <laughs> if someone forced you to wear headphones and they put the volume on blast, and then the, the the messages in the headphones, what they were saying were, like, really scary, psychotic things, like, you know, kill your sister now, do it, do it now, or take those pills, do it, you know? And you can't shut that off, you know? That's friggin' creepy, okay? I don't know personally firsthand how it is. I can only relate it because I lived with someone for like over 30 years with the illness. So even when I got married, we still lived in the same house. I just moved up to, uh, I moved upstairs to the apartment upstairs. So, um, it's one of the worst mental illnesses to have because he can turn into a raging lunatic who becomes so psychotic. Um, my cousin Johnny, tried, he had schizophrenia too. That's on my father's side. That was my, um, my father's brother's son. Uh, no, my father's sister's son. Sorry, I got that wrong. My father's sister's son. Yeah, Helen's son. And he tried to kill my uncle. Yeah, he, he tried to kill, uh, let's see, Connie would have been his Aunt Connie. Yeah, his Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie, he tried to kill him. He took, in one of his psychotic rages, he took, um, there was a cement tabletop, and he took that, and it was really heavy. And you know how they say, like, when you have these, I don't know, these, I don't know what you call it, but when people get in a certain state, like when they see someone trapped in, in a car or something, they can lift the car. They have incredible powers or something. When they, when, you know, when you're enraged, you, you have like 10 times more your own strength or something like that, because 
a normal man would not be able to lift. This was a heavy, heavy, very big round cement top. And he lifted it and he was about to throw it at my uncle, who was much older, and kill him in one of his psychotic rages. So it's very scary as a child growing up. Oh, my God. I was petrified. And then my mother made my life. That's another story. She always blamed me and, and she physically and uh, verbally abused me, um, took out all her frustrations on me. But so I had no one. I was the only child. I had nobody. And I mean no one. I was scared. Can you imagine a little girl when her father goes off like this, it, it, it telling, you know, I grew up like people are, are trying to kill us. People are trying to destroy us. There's a bomb planted under the car. He talks about the CIA and the FBI, like you know, like um, they're in on the plot. I mean, you hear a lot about that today when people um, talk about that, um, the government and how the government's plotting. I'm not going to get into that, okay? And I'm not going to tell you my side of the story either. But a lot of people think um, the government is plotting all this with um, the COVID-19. Um, it's probably tab taboo to even bring it up. I'm just bringing it up. Only in reference to the schizophrenic, how the schiz how my father thought the government was in some convoluted plan. Like people think that about COVID. Some people do think about that, that, you know, that it's not real. It's some convoluted plan by the government. That's how my father was. And it wasn't COVID. It was just <laughs> back then. It was just he thought it was some, you know crazy thing that the government was trying to destroy him the cia was in on it the fbi i mean just really you know far out things you know and this is what i grew up and that's why i'm a borderline because of the trauma you know also because you know it's neurological okay my father schizophrenia schizophrenia is neurological my son is brain damaged severely severely brain damaged that's neurological and borderline is partly neurological. So <laughs> three generations of brain injury. On the medication, like he was the nicest guy, but you know, he felt so subdued, you know, like he wasn't really living life. He wasn't feeling life. Imagine if you will, like you're having sex and the feelings are all, you know, you can't get excited. You feel so subdued. It's like pointless, right? Why bother having sex if you're not going to feel anything? Well, that's how, imagine going through life like that, not being able to feel anything when you're on this medication. So he said, I'm not taking this anymore. I feel, I, you know, I don't need it. Because often this is what happens is a catch-22. When schizophrenia, um, when people are on their medication, they feel like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. I don't need the medication. But the medication is what's making you, you know, stop ha hearing the voices. And then when you go off of it, then you're not fine. And you, you know, go back to hearing the voices. And then, yeah, there was a period um, that he said, I'm done with this medication. And then my mother called the police on him. She said that he chased her around the house with a knife. Now, I don't know if he tried to kill my mother because I don't trust my mother. So I can't say if that sto story was true. But she told that to the police and they locked him up in the in McLean Hospital. I'm not a stranger to McLean Hospital, right? Yeah. A lot of celebrities went to McLean Hospital. I think James Taylor went to McLean Hospital. There's a, a lot of other ones too. I, that just he just comes to mind. Um so it's torment being schizophrenic. I mean, it's torment to love someone who's schizophrenic. I can't imagine what it's like if you have schizophrenia, I mean, if you do, drop a comment. Or if you know someone, drop a comment and let me know about it and how how you guys deal with it. I mean, I eventually saw his psychiatrist, Dr. Robert Torchin. I heard his name all through my life. Um, that's He needed a psychiatrist to get his meds. Um, and they were very potent meds. They were, It was amazing how potent they were. There was this tiny little blue pill i mean it was smaller than a tic tac it was like if you take a tic tac and you cut that in half the pill would be about that size <laughs> it was that tiny 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 blue and that the, the blue pills i think they 
refer to Viagra as the blue pills. But this wasn't Viagra. No, no, no. This was subduing him, not like... <laughs> so, I just wanted to bring some awareness of, you know, what it's like to, to, to grow up around a schizophrenia um, person. Um, what it's like secondhand. I can't say what it's like firsthand because I didn't have schizophrenia. Um, maybe... My, my children don't have schizophrenia. I'm just wondering, like, how does it skip a generation? But my children don't have it. Um, I really don't know. Like, if you're schizophrenic and you have children, what are their chances of getting schizophrenia? Or what are their, your children's children, what are their chances of getting schizophrenia? But it's very, very scary for the people that love you because you can't reach the person in that kind of psychotic state. And, um... Yeah, and it's frightful because you don't know what they're going to do. You know, you become you become very much afraid. I was scared. I was petrified. Like, what is daddy going to do? You know, he's enraged. And and, when, and those kind of rages, like I said with my, um, my cousin Johnny, you know, they, like, ten times their own strength. They could, you know, he picked up that cement table. And, you know, so a lot of schizophrenia end up in jail and mental wards. You know. It's really sad homeless because they can't, you know, keep, I mean, how do you keep a job like that, right? He was let go from one job after another job. No one, no one's going to keep an employee like that, right? Because someone accusing everyone and going into rages saying, you're trying to kill me like that. They're not going to. So it's very, very, it's very difficult. So when you see that homeless person on the street, a lot of people put homeless people down. I was friends with a homeless person in Jamaica Plain. Because my therapist, one of my therapists was there and, you know, I went to therapy two or three times a week with that person. And I, I would see him. His name was Miles. I'd sit on the, you know, the sidewalk with him and we'd chat. I mean, he was very, very intelligent, you know. But a lot of people, you know, there's a stigma about being homeless. And really, you shouldn't put people that are less fortunate than you down or look down on them yourself. So you don't know what they're dealing with. I mean, it could be you who has mental illness, right? It could be you who, who has brain damage, okay? I mean, if you're hit by a car, you just don't get it from an illness. You can get it from meningitis like my son. But you can get brain damage from an accident, um, a car accident. I read a book where uh, a wife wrote about her husband who got it on a boat accident. Yeah, the, I guess the, the blade, a motorboat or something, the blade of the boat hit his head and he got brain damage. Um, I, I'm going to do another video on brain damage. I have to, now that I'm thinking of it. I say I'm always two steps ahead. When I do one video, I say, oh, no, oh, yeah, I got to I gotta do that. I got to do that next. I got to talk about brain damage, of course. I do, but this video is just about schizophrenia. So it's very scary and, and it's hard when you have no one to talk to. I mean, I couldn't tell my friends. I didn't even know it was called schizophrenia. Can you believe that? I didn't even know that till in my late 30s. All I heard growing up was, you know your daddy isn't right. That's it. You know he's crazy, but I didn't know the name. I didn't know I was borderline, right? People don't like labels, but you know what? Labels help. They help me. Because it helps to label. This is a mental illness called schizophrenia. Instead of saying, oh, don't put a label on it. He's just crazy. You know he's not right. But when you have a label, you can look it up and see, you know, oh, my God, this is, this is my dad they're talking about. Oh, wow, this is what it's called. Other people have it. You know, and that's how you get information and you don't feel so isolated. I felt so isolated because I couldn't tell my friends what was going on. I didn't even know what was going on. I didn't know my dad had schizophrenia. I knew nothing about schizophrenia. I, I, I knew nothing about it at all. It wasn't until I was in my 30s that, you know, I knew my father was a schizophrenic. I knew my mother was a narcissistic and I knew I was borderline, borderline personality disorder. I didn't know a thing. I just thought that's the way I was, you know, I'm over emotional. I mean, people will say, oh, she's so dramatic, you know, get over it. You're so dramatic. Or, you know, he's a loony. He's crazy. But no, this is real. Mental illness is real and, it, and it's out there. People have it. 
and other people don't understand. They just, you know, try to like whitewash it and say, oh, just get over it. So dramatic. Oh, that person's just loony. That person's loony. No, you could, anyone, you or anyone you love could, you know, it's a terrible thing. But just like cancer, right? People don't say that about people with cancer, huh? There's no stigma on that. That's what gets me angry. Does it get you angry? That if you have cancer, oh, everyone is right there, okay, with sympathy and compassion, as they should be. As they should be. My father died of cancer. He was down to 108 pounds. He died of cancer. He had an enormous tumor on his liver, inoperable. So, yeah, I know all about cancer, too. Maybe I'll do something on that, but... What I'm trying to say is that people don't have the compassion for mental illness as they do for cancer. They just don't. But, you know, they should. Because a person didn't ask for it. My father didn't ask to have schizophrenia. I didn't ask to be a borderline. My son didn't ask to have traumatic brain injury. These people don't ask for their illness. You know, someone doesn't ask to be bipolar, you know. So, why can't you give them some compassion just some human kindness how about that how about some human kindness for people who have mental illness some compassion i mean you you do it for people with cancer right why can't you do it for people with mental illness and i'll and i'll sign off there